Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna and today I want to show you an exam from 10th grade about the basics of mathematics. We have 10 questions, no calculator and a maximum of 25 minutes. So let's start with question number one. State the size of angle beta. We have this triangle here. The sketch is not to scale. They give us the 65 degrees angle here. Beta is here. And then these lines continue here and here. And they give us this angle with a size of 35 degrees. Beta lies opposite to this angle here. So beta is the opposite angle to this angle and has the same size then. So we can say immediately that the size of beta equals 35 degrees and we're done with number one. Number two. Insert the correct relation sign less than, greater than or equal to. 0.06 meters, is it less than, greater than or equal to 60 centimeters? So we have different units here. So maybe we take the first number, the 0.06 meters and convert it to centimeters so that we can compare the numbers easier. How do I get from meters to centimeters? Well, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So I get from meters to centimeters by just multiplying by 100. So I do the same here, I multiply by 100. And if I do that, I just have to take my decimal point and move it two steps to the right because I have two zeros here. So one step, Second step, I put my uh, decimal point here, so I have 6.0, there is nothing anymore, so the result is just 6. So this number here is equal to 6 centimeters, and if I compare them now, 6 centimeters is less than 60 centimeters, and I'm done with number 2. Number 3, check the fraction that corresponds to the shaded area. Okay, we have this circle here that is divided into several segments. These segments are all of the same size. This last segment is divided into two smaller parts. And to be able to find the fraction that corresponds to the shaded area, we have to count all segments that are shaded and then we have to divide this number by the number of segments we have in total. But to be able to do this, all these segments have to be of the same size. So we have to divide every segment here into smaller parts that are all of the same size and now we can just count. How many of these are shaded? One, two, three. Okay, three of them are shaded. How many of them do we have in total? Well, we start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve uh, parts in total. Three over twelve. Nice. <laughs> we don't get this as an answer. Awesome. But we can reduce this fraction here because both numbers are divisible by 3. So 3 over 3 equals 1. 12 over 3 equals 4. 1 over 4 is the answer. And whew, yes, this is our answer. And we can go to number 4. Find the value of the expression for a equals 4 and b equals negative 3. Okay, so just plug these values in. Instead of our a, we write a 4. So we have 4 minus, and instead of the b, we write the negative 3. So we have minus negative 3. So we write the negative 3 into parentheses because we have this minus minus here. And the same in the denominator, we have 2 times the 4 then, then the plus, and instead of the b, we write the negative 3 again in parentheses. Let's simplify this. 4 minus minus 3. So we have a 4 plus the 3. And in the denominator, 2 times 4, we have to calculate this first. So 2 times 4 equals 8. And then plus minus 3 equals minus 3. Let's calculate this. 4 plus 3 equals 7. 8 minus 3 equals 5. And we have 
our result. Number five. Find an equation to calculate the total area. Okay, we have two rectangles here. To find the total area, we call it A, and we can just find it by taking the area of the first rectangle first. So it is A times the height. What is the height? It's my C. So I have A times C for my first rectangle, and then I add the area of the second rectangle, which would be B times C. So I just add this, and this is my equation, and I'm done. Number six. Check the expression that results after expanding the parentheses. Okay, let's get rid of these parentheses. We have these parentheses squared, which means we can write this as parentheses times parentheses. So 2a minus b and 2a minus b in here as well. Let's multiply these two by multiplying each element of the first parentheses by each element of the second. What do we get then? 2a times 2a equals 4a squared. 2a times negative b equals negative 2ab. Negative b times 2a equals negative 2ab as well. And negative b times negative b equals plus b squared. We can simplify this a little bit. We have the 4a squared here and then these parts are the same. So negative 2 of these minus 2 of these equals negative 4 of these ab's and then we have plus b squared. So what would be our result? We have 4a squared. Where do we have? We have 4a squared here. Oh, this is the only solution with 4a squared, but the rest looks good as well. So this is our answer. Number seven. In a random experiment, balls were drawn from a container and the following tree diagram was created. Complete the following illustration to represent the contents of the container before the experiment begin. So they give us this tree diagram here and this container. But balls were already drawn from this container. So this is now during, in the middle of the experiment, our container looks like this. But they want us to add balls. We don't know how many yet, but so many balls, white balls or red balls, so that the probability from the beginning on, when we start the experiment, uh, that we have a probability of 2 over 3 to get a white ball and a probability of 1 over 3 to get a red ball. What do these numbers tell us? Two out of three. So this number here on the bottom is always the number of balls in total in our box. Three balls in total in here. Doesn't really work. <laughs> Doesn't look good. Here are already four in here. This means that this fraction is a reduced version and we can rename it. So we can also write it if we uh, multiply by two. So we multiply the denominator by two. So three times two equals six and the numerator as well. So two times two equals four. This looks better. So now we have a total of six balls in here. So we know, okay, there, there were six balls in here from the beginning on and four of these six balls were white. Okay, four of them are white. And now let's do the same thing here with this fraction if we rename it. So multiply by two, we have six and multiply by two, one times two, we have two. They tell us six balls were in there and two of them are red. So we add two red balls in here and now we see this was the beginning from the experiment. We have a probability of four over six. So we have one, two, three, four white balls from all these six balls were white and two out of these six, one, two, were red. Six in total and this is how you can solve this question. Number eight. 
find a trigonometric expression for angle alpha. We have this triangle here. It's a right triangle. Our angle alpha is in here and we have to find a trigonometric expression for this angle. So we can use the help of so ka toa to do that because it helps us finding the formulas for sine, cosine and tangent. Let's do everything with the sine of our angle alpha here. So we want to find sine of alpha and we get it by taking the opposite side of our angle. So this side that lies across my angle, that is r, and divide it by the hypotenuse, that is always the side that lies across the right angle. So this is my hypotenuse here, so it is my t and this is the expression they were searching for. Number nine. Check which function corresponds to the following graph. Ooh, okay, we have these four answers here. We have sine of x, something with sine of 2x, sine of x again, but something else around here, and sine of 2x minus 1. Okay, let's find something out about our function here. We can take a look at the period of this function. For that, we start at any point of our graph. I just start here. And then we go through this wave movement until the wave starts to repeat itself. So from now on, this would be the same movement again and again and again. So if I take a look at this one wave here and I take a look at the length of this one wave, this is my period. So from 0 to 2 pi, so 2 pi is my period. What does this mean now for these functions here? Which periods do they have? We can compare it with the standard form. So we know that sine of x, so if we really just have the standard sine of x form, this has a period of 2 pi. And you can change the period by multiplying this x here inside of your sine by another number. So if there is no other number in front of the x, then my period didn't change. So my period is still 2 pi. So from this first function here, there is just x in here. So this function has a period of 2 pi. So this would be possible for our function. This function here, ah, there is a 2 in front of my x. So I know they changed the period. It's not 2 pi anymore like the standard sign. So this can't be my function. Here, there is no number in front of my x, so this could be, has the period of 2 pi, but here again, there is a 2 in front of my x, so this function doesn't work. So the period helped us to eliminate these two answers. Now we only have to choose between these two. We use the period. We could now take a look at the amplitude of our function. We find the amplitude by taking a look at the maximum value of our function. This is here at the 1. And our minimum value of our function is here at the negative 3. And then we have to measure the distance between these two, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 steps. But 4 is not our amplitude. The amplitude is just half of it. So we have an amplitude of 2. Okay. What about the standard sine? Which amplitude does this function have? It has an amplitude of 1. Where can we see it or where do we change the amplitude? It's a 1 times sine of x. If you don't have another number in front of your sine, the amplitude is going to be 1 but you can change it by multiplying by another number. So if you want to have an amplitude of 2, you just have to multiply this by 2, which means here is the 2, here is no 2. This function has an amplitude of 1, but this function has an amplitude of 2, what we were looking for. So this is our answer. Last question. Provide the answer without using powers of 10. 
2.1 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So here we have this power of 10 and we want to find an expression without this times 10 to the power of negative 4. We can find this by just moving the decimal point. So multiplying by a power of 10 just means either you move your decimal point to the right and make your number here larger. This would just be the case if your exponent here was positive. Our exponent is negative, so this means that we have to move our decimal point to the left because it's a really small number here. We can do this by writing everything into a table. This helps us to find the number better. Uh, because we know it's going to be a small number because of the negative exponent here, it's going to be something like 0 0.0000. Uh, we can take this 2.1 and write it here to the end. The 21, our decimal point was here in between. And the 4, or the negative 4, now tells us move your decimal point 4 steps to the left. So here, 1, 2, 3, 4, we put our decimal point here and fill everything with zeros. So we have 0, point, 0, 0, 0, and then the rest. So our number is 0, 0.00021 without this power of 10. This was the last question. I'm curious how you solved this exam. Please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.